Maybe you're listening to this episode because you are considering mouth taping because you heard that it helps with dry mouth, bad breath, snoring, sounding nasally, feeling congested. Uh, You've heard that it helps to improve your dental health. Whatever the reason is, today in this episode, I'm gonna share with you my journey, which has started over a year ago, what you can expect, um, what it's like getting started, how to mouth tape. But also today, I'm gonna share with you why I no longer mouth tape, and the reason is probably going to shock you. All right, thanks for being here, let's get to it. Hey, boo, thanks for joining me. My name is Shalene Johnson, this is The Shalene Show, and today I'm gonna gonna share with you my experience with mouth taping, why I considered doing it, the things that I experienced, some of the benefits. I'm also going to share with you some of the challenges with it, as well as my thoughts on it today, um, which is going to be some pretty shocking and revealing, like kind of blows my mind. I am just a study of one. This is purely anecdotal, but I'm going to tell you what I think happened. All of that and more today on The Shalene Show. Thanks for being here. What was that punch? I mean, is that the cheesiest thing you've ever seen? You don't even know what I'm talking about unless you're watching YouTube. All right. So also, you know what else you don't know about? Listen, feel free to listen on whatever app you're listening to. Now, hear me out. You can listen to the podcast and you should listen to the podcast wherever it makes sense for you. But some of you are visual people and you like to enjoy seeing some of the diagrams. You you want to see what I'm wearing. And I'm telling you today, this is a pretty dang cute outfit considering how chaotic my life is today. Um, this blouse is by Alice and Olivia. I mean, have you ever seen such puffy sleeves? Listen, ladies from the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. We love a good puffy sleeve. We love a strong hairspray hold, a banana clip. Give me a scrunchie. These Gen Zs that thinks, think they invented the scrunchie, girls. Gen X invented the scrunchie. I'm also wearing a very comfortable little skirt and some boots, which, hold oh, up, this like, there we go. Jeffrey Campbell boots. Anyways, back to the nose breathing, back to the mouth breathing. Nose breathing, mouth breathing. Yeah. So I'm probably going to mess that up a little bit today and interchange them because what we're talking about is mouth taping. And the reason why many people consider doing mouth taping is because they are mouth breathers. And we really should all focus on being nose breathers, breathing through our nose. But why do we need to focus on breathing through our nose and not our mouth? Let's talk about it. Number one, filtration. So your nose is specifically designed to filter out impurities. That means like dust, small particles, you know, just things in the air, dander, whatever, allergens that cause uh, problems in our respiratory tract. Like it's very interesting if you look at some of the research regarding mouth breathing and asthma. Quite interesting. When we breathe through our nose, it acts like a humidifier. Doesn't that make sense? So like right now, and I did this in my last video too, but just right now, I want you to just pinch your nose and take a deep breath in through your mouth. Just do it and see what you feel. Like you probably start coughing. You you feel like this dry itchiness and you realize, wow, it is such a big difference when you actually allow your nose to do what it's supposed to do, which is filter out all of those particles. So when we breathe through our mouth, it dries out our throat. The other thing that dries out our throat is being in like a, a dry environment, right? So the act of breathing through your nose actually warms the air. So by the time it reaches your lungs, it's basically, it's more comfortable to breathe in. This is especially, especially, especially true if you're in um, a cold weather situation. When you breathe through your nose, it regulates your breathing rate. So if, you've ever, if you're like me and every time I go and get my blood pressure taken, I, f- I have a David Blaine moment where I'm, I, I don't know what I'm thinking, but I, I just really want to impress them with my blood pressure. And so I try to bring my breathing down as slow as possible. And in order to do that, you want to close your mouth and breathe through your nose. What's interesting about breathing through your nose, now listen, I just have to tell you, I have been a chronic mouth breather all of my life. And I had this belief, I can't breathe through my nose. I just can't breathe through it. It's like, I can't get enough air. I feel like I'm suffocating. I believe that up until a year ago. But there are so many reasons why it is beneficial to really, because it's a habit. It is totally a habit. And oftentimes it's a habit that's taught in families unknowingly. Look at your kids or your spouse. Like notice, does everybody kind of breathe through their nose or are they breathing through their mouth? And the one way you know to do this is Look at your family members when they're just sitting relaxed. Is their mouth open or is their mouth closed? Because our mouth really, <laughs> our mouth should be closed. My husband's like, yeah, don't forget it. Just joking. He, he's not that guy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. 
When we breathe through our nose, it slows down our breathing rate, which slows down our stress level, slows down our heart rate, and it helps us to to manage stress. Also, your nasal sinuses produce nitric oxide, which is a molecule, I sound so smart now, that plays a very significant role in the way your body absorbs oxygen. So oxygen absorption. (laughs) So the mouth, um, when you use your mouth, it bypasses that process. So that means when we're breathing again through our nose, especially when we're exercising, you're going to get a better workout. It allows you to breathe deeper. It allows you to breathe slower and it allows your lungs to absorb more oxygen. Isn't that crazy? All of those things obviously help to support your immune system. Your nose actually traps mucus. Why do I hate that word so much? In, it, it traps it in your nose and it traps pathogens like viruses and bacteria, not all, but it it does do, that's its job, right? And so when those things are trapped in your nose and then you blow your nose, it prevents those things from reaching your lungs, which can cause illness. So overall, it's going to improve, like, you know, when you're getting better oxygen absorption, when your uh, immune system is improved, when you have a lower stress rate, a lower heart rate, a lower blood pressure. You can imagine how all of these things, you have got improved exercise. All these things sound like a positive, don't they? There's actually a few more reasons why I was personally considering doing mouth breathing, and that is um, my sleep. So sleep, as you know, once I kind of had my awakening in the health and fitness industry, the very first thing I needed to fix was my sleep. I had horrible, 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 horrible sleep habits. And I know part of the reason why I had horrible sleep habits is because I would wake up all the time and I always had an incredibly dry mouth. Like my mouth would wake me up, like just like, gosh, and I and I would try um, uh, throat lozenges, which are either sugar free and I don't like the chemicals in the sugar free ones like they mess with my digestive tract or they're loaded with sugar. So it's either I have horrible digestion Or I've got like sugar melting in my mouth. And even before that, like all my life, true story, I've had horrible, horrible teeth. Everybody in my family has. Guess what? We're all mouth breathers. But it's just a habit. And because we're mouth breathers, what I learned from my new dentist uh, a couple years ago was that he's like, oh, that that explains why. Because I'm like, do I have soft teeth? Like, is this like, what is going on? Dude, I brush my teeth like freaking all the time. The amount of times, like when your um, dental hygienist says, you know, you should ju- try to floss once a day. I'm like, once a day? I floss like I'm a chain smoker. <laughs> I love those little dental floss things and I keep them in my purse and I, I keep them in my car. And it's just like something I like to do when I'm sitting in my car. So if you have a habit you're trying to create, uh, make it easy to develop that habit. So for me, it's just like when I'm in my car, what, what, almost, what else am I going to do other than drive? and uh, improve my dental hygiene. Anyways, I was doing all those things and still getting horrible, I mean, horrible uh, dental checkups. Like every single time I would go, I'd be getting cavities. I'm like, what am I, a a nine-year-old after Halloween? Why do I have such bad teeth? And why was I continually having root canals? And I had horrible checkups. Like I was, I always had cavities, root canals. I felt like every single time I went to the dentist, it was costing me thousands and thousands of dollars. So I started using, I won't go into the whole story because I did share a lot of this in the last video I did on mouth taping. So you you probably don't need to hear the whole story. It's probably kind of boring. But let's talk about why I did a little bit of research and realized, okay, this might be a solution. Well, number one is I was using these tabs, these like things you could put in your mouth and they would just keep your mouth moist, which was great. It definitely, definitely improved my dental hygiene a ton. But then I saw a, was it a blog post or a podcast? I don't remember which, but something made me go like, oh my gosh, this might be the solution I've been looking for. So uh, then I started looking at the research. Now, if you geek out on this kind of stuff, I will link to it in our show notes because I'm the kind of person who's like, I want to see the research. So there's been some really pretty profound studies that have been done on this. And so again, like if you geek out on those kinds of things, we're talking about research that's been conducted by very reputable sources and published in reputable journals like the Journal of Neuroscience, the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition, that's pretty profound, and the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. I do need to say this before I go much further, because the last video that I made, I got a lot of slack from dentists and doctors who were like, it's 
you don't just tell people to, to tape their mouth shut. I'm like, all right. So here's my official warning. Warning. If you're considering mouth taping to encourage nasal breathing during sleep, it is highly recommended that you first consult with a healthcare provider or a sleep specialist or perhaps a dental specialist. This is especially important if you have underlying health conditions such as sleep apnea, respiratory issues, allergies, which could potentially worsen with mouth taping. Additionally, if you experience any difficulty breathing, frequent night wakenings, or daytime sleepiness, these could all be signs of a sleep disorder that requires additional professional medical attention. Lastly, mouth taping might pose a risk of choking or suffocation, particularly if the taping is dislodged or gets caught in your throat while you're sleeping. Therefore, I suggest that you seek professional guidance before starting mouth taping as it is crucial for safety and efficacy. So let's talk about why I personally started mouth taping. I know it seemed like I was joking, but in all seriousness, if you are experiencing any other underlying health conditions, like I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dentist, I'm not an expert at these things. I'm just sharing with you my own personal experience and I would never want to uh, give anyone false information. So, you know, when in doubt, check with your doctor, which is the same thing they say before every single solitary exercise video you've ever watched. I started doing it because my mouth was very dry because of the research I started looking at. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my first experience. So I had heard about this probably maybe four or five years before I tried it. And I was like, that is crazy. Like so many people, every time I talked about the fact that I would, you know, use a lozenge to keep my mouth um, moist, so many people would tell me, you've got to try mouth taping. And I'm like, that's so weird. That's just weird. First of all, my poor husband has to see me without all of my glam in place. You know what I'm saying? And like, and I also sleep with my eyes partially open. So this poor man has to wake up in the middle of the night and see this woman with her, I thought like with her mouth taped, because I was picturing probably as sometimes you may have, I was picturing like, you know, tape all the way over your mouth. No, it ain't that. And then my eyes are partially open. It's just a scary sight for the poor man. So I was like, I'm not going to do it. Plus, it made me feel very, very claustrophobic. The thought of not being able to breathe, the thought of being forced to breathe through my nose just made me panic because I felt like I couldn't breathe through my nose. So I'm like, how will that even work? So then I watched a couple of videos, as you are right now, and I'll show you how I tape my mouth. First of all, the type of tape that you use, I think, makes all the difference in the world. Now, there are tapes that are specifically made just for mouth breathe or for taping your mouth at night. So they have a little hole so you you can actually breathe through your mouth if you need to. And I think that's probably a great way to start. I have never used those, to be very honest. I just didn't feel like I needed to after I watched a couple of videos sharing the same technique that I use, which is just using a postage stamp size piece of tape. Here it is. It's the This, this roll is too big. Well, you could cut it. But this is the gentle paper tape. And um, I first started off with this Stronghold Pain-Free for Sensitive Next here, I don't know that I necessarily recommend this. So I will put links to the tape that I personally recommend. But again, if you're just starting out, you might want to buy the tape that's specifically made for mouth taping because it, it allows you to breathe through your mouth if you need to. And you don't have to worry about it um, like panicking and not being able to breathe be again because there is that hole in the center. But you're saying, well, then if there's a hole in the center, what would be the point of taping your mouth? Well, it puts your jaw in the right anatomical position. And that's some really fascinating side effects that I was not anticipating. I didn't start mouth taping for this reason, but I'm going to tell you what I think it's done for my jaw and my face. Again, study of one, but it's pretty crazy. So I started with a little postage sized pieces of tape. And the first night, I kept it on for about, I would say, I, I don't know, you'll have to go back and watch the previous video where I, I detailed it exactly. But it, if I re recall, it was probably like an hour or two. And then I just kept waking up and it just felt weird. I wasn't used to it. So I took it off. Then the next next night, I, I was able to go a few more hours. And then I took it off. And then the next night, I went all the way through the night. And what I noticed is I was falling asleep faster. It was almost like it was forcing me to meditate. It was forcing me to slow down. It was forcing me to think about my breathing. It was forcing me to de-stress. And it, I liked the way it felt. And here's the most remarkable part. When I woke up in the morning, I didn't have a dry mouth. I felt amazing. I felt more alert. And I felt like I had better cognition. From a respiratory standpoint, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, because I, I didn't, I just didn't feel that different in terms of like my respiration, 
but I, I did, and I don't know how much of it's placebo effect or the su- power of suggestion, but I did feel better. I did feel more energized. And I have to imagine that a, a big part of that is because of sleep, because I was getting more quality sleep. As I continued to do that over the course of the next couple of months, I would find that some mornings I would wake up and the tape was just gone, but it hadn't, you know, I know I said like, you have to be careful you don't choke on it, but I don't know. I don't, I just don't see how that would happen. But anyways, I, I don't want to encourage anybody who's worried about it. I would sometimes wake up and it, it or it wouldn't less necessarily be off my face, but it would just be like stuck on my top lip and it had peeled off my bottom lip. And that's because I use a tape that's really, really light. And I think using a very small piece of tape and a piece of tape that is re- very, very easy to remove helped me to get over that panic feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to suffocate. So again, you know, what I noticed then, here's the side effects that I wasn't expecting. I started recognizing that I was keeping my mouth closed all the time during the day. It made me become very, very aware of how I was breathing when I was exercising. I'd never done that before, especially if you teach fitness classes, you kind of have to have your mouth open the whole time because you have to cue, right? Well, if I'm not teaching classes when you're on a treadmill, when you're walking outside, consider doing that you know, you're not going to suffocate or choke to death on a piece of tape just by simply closing your mouth. Encourage your kids to close their mouth when they breathe. In fact, in some societies, it's really considered very, very tacky to just have your mouth open. So there's that. I noticed that I was being much more just cognizant of how I was breathing and that I stopped losing my voice as often. I didn't have a dry, scratchy throat as often. And my dental checkups just kept improving. I haven't had a cavity. I haven't had anything other than like a cap fall off, which is just is what it is. But I haven't had any like new cavities, no new decay, nothing since I started doing this. And I'm telling you, I'd never gone to the dentist and not had something that had to be drilled on over like my whole lifetime. And my sister and my mom and everybody else in my family the same way. So I I really, I kind of think it's the whole mouth breathing thing. All right. So then what I figured out is because there were a couple of times where I just ran out of the tape. I forgot, like forgot to order it on Amazon. How could I forget to order anything on Amazon? And I went a couple of nights without it and realized when I woke up, I woke up with my mouth closed. I woke up and I realized like my mouth wasn't dry. I think I I had trained myself to keep my mouth closed. I started watching because I wear an aura ring. I started watching my sleep score. My sleep score, as soon as I started mouth taping, my sleep score started improving significantly. And especially with regard to my REM sleep. Now I'm just going to be honest and tell you, I don't know if it's because of the mouth taping. I don't know if it's also about that time I started taking um, a sleep gummy, which you guys have heard me talk about a million times. And I will say this, my sleep score is still dramatically improved from what it used to be, but I still take a sleep gummy every night. I actually take two. And I, here's the funny thing that I've, you know, you're waiting to find out like why I don't, I don't mouth tape anymore. I don't mouth tape on a regular basis because I don't need to, because I've now developed the habit. There are times, however, where it's kind of like anything else, like counting macros. I don't, I don't count my macros very often. But when I feel like, uh oh, I've gotten, I slipped into some bad habits, I should probably reattach. That's what I'll do with the mouth taping. So, um, you know, buy some, especially if I'm in a hotel. Oh, that's the one time I for sure mouth tape is that's when I'm in a hotel because I find that when I'm in a hotel, they're very, very dry. And I wake up and I just am like, I can't even breathe, you know? And I also find that I lose my voice more often if I'm in a hotel. So I always mouth tape when I'm in a hotel. Um, I thought about doing it on an airplane because that's when I'm, when you're sleeping, sitting straight up, it's kind of hard to keep your mouth closed when you fall asleep. You know what I mean? But I think that'd be so, I don't know, maybe I will. I'm about to take an international flight from New York to Nice. Maybe I will mouth tape if my husband will let me, you know, because most people are asleep anyways. And what do I care what people think, right? Yeah. So I might do that. So on rare occasion, I will mouth tape just to reassess the habit. And as I've continued to do my research, I learned that that is, in fact, what happens for most people. Most people will find that they can develop this habit in less than 30 days. So that's kind of cool. 
Here's the unexpected part of mouth taping. I mean, aside from some of the things I've already shared with you, but this one is, I, I don't know. It, it was brought to my attention when I shared before and after photos of my face since I started doing lymphatic massage for my face, right? I will not be offended if you don't see the difference. I saw that TikTok trend about how you do lymphatic massage on your jawline to help remove inflammation, just make things look more chiseled. So I started trying it. I felt like that day I noticed a difference. Like I, I think it's even helped my cheekbones. Look, like, look. And here's one with my chin down, like not the most flattering angle. I see it. But I do it on my nose too, like to thin it out and get rid of inflammation there. Look, I didn't get a nose job yet. Like, let me show you what I do, okay? So I just take my knuckles and I go here and then down. And I do 20 strokes. Okay, and then on my nose, I just go like this. And I don't even know if this is right. I, don't, I have no idea, but it's working and it's free. It's just something I do. I don't do it every day even. I probably should. I wish I would, but I, I forget. And I just, um, sometimes I don't have time. Sometimes I don't feel like it. But if I, know, if I wake up and you know the days where you wake up and you're like, hello, puffy face. Did you just gain 10 pounds in your face? On those days, I will, before I put on my makeup, I will spend some time doing some lymphatic massage to my face. And I notice that it immediately reduces inflammation. But as I looked at these two side-by-side -side photos, it's more than just inflammation that's changed with my face. And it was somebody who commented in my direct messages. They're like, don't you also mouth tape? And I you know, said yes. And they're like, that's why your face looks different. I'm like, really? I mean, it almost looks like I had a chin implant. Like my face is a little bit more, like my jaw is more square, I think. It's my, my jaw is more um, defined. And no, I have not had a neck lift, although I'm not opposed. But I have, my jaw is more defined and my face just looks a little bit more square, I guess. So if you you will see the photos if you're watching on the video or if you go and watch my Instagram, you'll you'll see the before and after. And this person sent me a DM and they're like, do take a look at some of the research regarding how by breathing through your nose, it changes the position of where you place your tongue, which means I've placed my tongue in a different position now for a year. And is it that which has shifted my face? I think for sure the lymphatic massage helps to reduce the inflammation. But in terms of changing the shape of my face, I don't know. Again, it's a study of one. But anecdotally, I'm thinking now, looking at all, because like, there's a lot of research on the um, position of the jaw and the way that a, especially a child's mouth develops, but that adults can change the position of their jaw and their face by learning proper tongue placement. And one of the easiest ways to do that is by Developing the habit of breathing through your nose. I don't know. So you're going to try it? Um, I think you probably should. I think you should, especially after you've ruled out that you don't have any other extenuating circumstances or conditions. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend a podcast you will find from Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist from Stanford. Fascinating show on the subject. Lots of research. And of course, you can go back and watch the video where I first broke down my experience of, of trying mouth taping. And if you want to learn more about health and fitness or you enjoyed this type of episode, I'd love to recommend the, the episode I did last week where I broke down exactly what I do every single week, my weekly workouts. I break down exactly what I do for cardio, what strength training workouts I do, my, my strength training splits, like how I train upper body, lower body, all the workouts, all the routines. And again, you can listen to that on any podcast app. If you want to watch it on YouTube, you'll actually see the workouts and you'll actually see the printout of each exercise that I do on each day. And you can take a screenshot of that. That's kind of fun. And right below this video, I've pinned a comment where I'd like to find out from you, um, has you, have you or your significant other, I'd love to know if you or your significant other is a mouth breather. And if you are, have you tried mouth taping? And or would you consider it? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Or maybe you've tried something else. That'd be interesting to hear too. So don't forget to respond to that comment right underneath that comment. That would be great. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for listening to the show, no matter where that is most convenient for you. No matter where you're listening, please double check and make sure you're subscribed. It's shocking to us every week when we look at our statistics and see how many thousands and thousands of people listen but haven't subscribed to the show. So if you could do me a favor, that's that's really what helps us the most. 
is making sure that you're subscribed after that. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe there, like, and leave a comment on YouTube. And that's where you can see a list of some of the other shows uh, that I've done on this topic or other relevant shows that you might find very interesting. It's always an honor to have you spend some time with me. I, I love you know your feedback on what other types of episodes you'd like to hear updates on. I regularly post polls on Instagram. So the topics that I cover are almost always because you said, talk about this. Like recently I said, do you want to do this, 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 or this? And one of them was parenting tips and that rated the lowest, which I thought was very interesting because the last time I'd done that poll, that had rated the highest. Must've been one of those weeks. Anyways, I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon.